Fred. Okay. The title of the message tonight is The Truth Versus True Facts. And a lot of people get these intermingled. And uh, we're going to see there's some real difficulties if you don't distinguish between what is the truth and what are true facts or what, what is true. Uh, it's a big difference because the truth is the wisdom from heaven about any situation, the truth. And that's what we want to focus on. And it's very easy to look at other things and what people are telling you and what you're seeing with your natural eyes and what you're hearing with your natural ears and think that that is true. And when we put those two things together, it waters down the truth of God's word and it makes it unprofitable and unproductive. And really there's a big difference between the truth and what is true or I call true facts. Uh, the true facts are temporary and they can be changed. Mm -hmm. The truth is the wisdom from heaven spoken by God himself and it is eternal and it will change your life and your situation. And so many people just get the two together and, and intermingle and one time they'll quote a scripture and the next time they'll quote what the doctor has said or what their bank account says or what their banker says or what their or what they read in a book what they read in a book or behaviors and and it's just confusing uh to people when you start uh, considering the two things as similar there's a big difference between god's truth the truth that's in his word and the true facts what you observe in the natural and uh, though that is inferior what you observe in the natural realm is inferior to god's truth and so what we want to do today is to recognize there is this big difference and, and if we're mixing the two uh, we're not going to get any results we make it uh, mm -hmm. unproductive we make god's word unproductive and unprofitable in our lives and we don't affect other people because of our doubt or unbelief. Uh, we can affect ourself, our life, and maybe even some of the people around us who are depending upon us. But we're not, we cannot live the higher life that Jesus came to give us. He said, mm -hmm. without the truth without the truth of God's word. He said, I have come to give you life and life more abundantly. That's a, that's a higher level of life. Most people are living at a very low level because they're not walking in the truth. They're mixing the truth and what they're seeing with their natural eyes in the natural realm. And so tonight it's, we're going to make this distinction so that we can, uh, we'll keep emphasizing these points, but I want you to know from John 8, verse 34. 32. That, I'm sorry, verse 32, that, that it's God's truth, the truth of his word. That will set us free. Okay, go ahead. John 8, 32. And you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Okay, so it's the truth that will set you free. It's not true facts. It's not what you see with your eyes, what you hear with your ears or not what's going on in the natural realm. And this relates to your spouse, your children, uh, your co-workers. We need to see them the way God sees them. And so we need to be looking at all mm. things in our life. We need to be looking at them through heaven's perspective. Amen. And so that's the basic concept. And so we're gonna look at how we actually do that and what are the consequences of it? Well, first of all, I want to go through some other verses in the book of John because he really understood about the truth. And first of all, I want to pick up a couple of verses from John, uh, St. John chapter one, verses one and 14. We'll see how these tie together. <clears throat> in the beginning was the word and the word was with God 
and the word was God. And then verse 14, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we saw his glory, glory as of the only son from the father, full of grace and truth. Okay. So here we see the word has always been God. He's one of the Godhead. The word is one member of the Godhead and the word became flesh. And we know him as Jesus, uh, but that he's also the son of God and he is full of truth. Amen. So God's word is full of truth and Jesus is the word. And so the word then, that's where the truth is. And so we find the truth, this is not true facts. This is eternal truth. I mean, and this is in the word of God. And now let's look at a couple of other verses in, in John. We'll start with John 6. John 6, 63. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and they are life. Okay, so this is Jesus speaking. He said the words, okay, so this is the word of God. That one, it is spirit and it is life. It's also the truth and spirit and life. Okay, now let's move on. Another verse in uh, John. John 14, 6. Jesus said to him, Thomas, <clears throat> I am the way, the truth, and the life. Okay. I am the way. Mm -hmm. I am the truth. So Jesus said, I am the truth. Mm -hmm. But that also means the word of God is the truth. Hallelujah. Because Jesus is the word manifested in the flesh as the son of God, full of the truth. Hallelujah. 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 This is a real important concept, and I hope we, you catch hold of it. Yes, and I want to say one thing. Okay. As you listen tonight, I want you to know that this message is not just a message that you would hear anyplace else. This message is an apostolic message to his people, to his body, to his church. And so please listen attentively uh, to what Brother Fred is, is saying tonight. Okay. So I want to give you a, a couple of examples. If you say, well, I only have uh, a little bit of money. I don't have enough money to pay my bills for the rest of the month. Then that is a true fact. I don't have enough money to pay my bills for the rest of the month. That's a true fact. It's something in the natural realm. It's temporary. It can be changed. But the truth is, Jesus went to the cross. Oh, hallelujah. He became poor, poor. so that we might become rich. Amen. See, that's Amen. the truth of the situation. And, and what we want to do, we want to catch hold of what God says about our situation and bring heaven on earth. See, that Jesus told us this is the way to pray. I want you to bring heaven, heaven to, to earth. earth. What is heaven saying about mm. your financial situation? Heaven is saying Jesus became poor, poor so that you might be rich. And Jesus said, I have come that you might have life, life and have it more, more abundantly. Abundant life. Oh, oh, that. Hallelujah. And that's what he said to us in the beginning okay. at the, in the word that okay. he just gave us. Okay. He says it's, it's time to receive everything that God has for you. Okay. Hallelujah. So, so we want to recognize that what we see in our natural realm, in the natural realm about our money and our finances is inferior to what we see in the supernatural realm. What heaven thinks about your finances, uh, heaven thinks that Jesus came, died on the cross, became poor so that you might be rich. Now, mm -hmm. if we can catch hold of these differences here between what heaven thinks and what your natural situation is, the, the one that's from heaven, the perspective from heaven will dominate and mm -hmm. supersede Hallelujah. the natural realm. What Hallelujah. You the natural Hallelujah. Realm. You'll change it. 
you'll change if you mm. can catch hold mm. of what heaven is saying about you and your situation you will change what your natural situation is Amen. okay so let's look at another th thought just to explain this let's say that you have a sickness in your body well and you go to the doctor and the doctor said oh you're sick and i'm going to have to give you some medicine that's all true facts that's true mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. not god's truth and uh, Ooh, it, I it, love it. I love it. It is inferior. Mm -hmm. It is inferior to the truth. The truth is, by His stripes, stripes you, you are healed. healed. That's First Peter two twenty four. This is the perspective of heaven. Now, if we catch hold of the perspective of heaven, we can overcome overcome the natural situation Hallelujah. and that's what will dominate in our life but if we mix the two and say well heaven says i'm healed by his stripes but the doctor says i'm sick and i just i took take these two things equally uh, then you will not be healed from heaven uh, because you've got to recognize that heaven's perspective is the higher perspective it's the superior perspective mm -hmm. it will dominate what you're going through in this life now not only oh, yeah. not only you but your children if you can catch a hold yeah. of what i'm saying tonight that you can change your relationships relationship Amen. with your spouse relationship with your children and you can change your children's situation if you catch hold of what I'm saying tonight, it's a very simple message that we must recognize there are two perspectives. One says the natural says this is what is true, but heaven says this is the truth, and the truth will dominate right. this mm. inferior true facts mm. if you believe. If you believe and Woo! act on it. Oh, Hallelujah. All we have to do is believe. Amen. Hallelujah. Woo! Good. Hallelujah. Now, a lot of people take heaven's perspective up here. This is the truth. And then they hear what the doctor says, or they see what the bank says, or they see the bad attitudes of their children, or the bad attitudes of their spouse, and, and, and they just bring all of those together and mix them up then there's going to be three things that are going to happen. First of all, uh, well, before, I, first of all, there's going to be confusion. Confusion. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so let's just look at a verse on confusion. This goes back to James. James 3, verses 14 through 16. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your heart, do not boast and lie against the truth this wisdom does not descend from above but is earthly sensual demonic for where envy and self-seeking exist confusion and every evil thing are there okay so that's where confusion is where you got envy and strife and you've got all of these maybe your relationship isn't progressing the way you want to maybe you've got envy and strife and maybe you've got envy and strife between your uh children with with your children uh, okay so that what's going to happen from that is going to come into confusion mm -hmm. you're not going to know what what to do but but if we're going to the uh, next uh, couple of verses in james 3 is that yeah james three seventeen. It, then it talks about the wisdom that comes from heaven this is the truth wisdom that comes from heaven this is the truth and this is what happens and this is from the passion translation but the wisdom from above is always pure Woo, right there oh I've got hallelujah it's good it's, it's good. pure see it's up here yeah we're not going to mix we're not going to mix, mix any the, natural things the natural things the inferior things with the superior things well it's got a, the wisdom from above uh, is the truth, and we have to keep it pure. Okay, go ahead and read that verse. Filled with peace, considerate, and teachable. It is filled with love and never displays prejudice or hypocrisy in any form. 
So the wisdom that is from above, see, that is pure. That's what, what I really want to emphasize. Mm -hmm. We can't take the wisdom that comes from above and mix it with the wisdom that's here because this is demonic. This is carnal. This is natural. This is all natural thinking. And you cannot mix the two because the wisdom from above, that's the that's the truth that has to stay pure. Hallelujah. And the first thing, if you, can, mm. if you start con mixing these two things, the truth from heaven and just what you see with your natural eyes, the way your children are behaving, the way your spouse is behaving, it, 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 that's natural kinds of things. The way your body's behaving. The way your body is behaving. That's natural. If you're going to mix these two things and think they're equal, you, you, you don't have an edge. You yeah, don't have yeah. the advantage. And you have, okay. and, but see, Jesus said, when the Holy Spirit comes, uh, you're going to have an advantage. Ooh, he's going to show you an advantage. And so you've, if you've got two things going on. If you've got problems in the natural realm, there's always a solution from the supernatural realm, but you can't mix the two. You have to keep on, keep this pure because it comes from heaven, wisdom from above. That's the truth. Mm -hmm. And you cannot mix it. It has to stay pure. Uh, if it's not pure, you're going to get confused. Amen. Your Amen. children will be confused. Hallelujah. Your spouse will be confused. That's right. Your boss at work will be confused. It's all, everything mm. is just confusing. Once you begin to mix the two, mix the natural and the supernatural, try to mix those mm -hmm. and say they're both equal. That is confusing. Now, not mm -hmm. only is it confusing, we're going to go to the next verse. And a mm. couple of verses, and this talks about contamination. Contamination, mm. uh, and that is you're taking what's from above, oh. the superior, and uh, saying, oh, what the doctors are saying is just important. What I see my children doing, their bad behavior, or their, their sickness that uh, my body or my family's body, sickness in that, and we're putting them all together, uh, and... Uh, then there's some contamination. I have a couple of verses mm. I want to share to read. One is out of Isaiah, and another one is out of Numbers. And the <laughs> word contamination means to make impure or unclean. Isaiah 52, 11. Depart, depart. Go out from there. Touch no unclean thing. Go out from the midst of her. Be clean. You who bear the vessels of the Lord. See, we're all temples of the Holy Spirit. We're we're mm, carriers mm, of the of Holy the Spirit. Spirit. And, and so we've got to keep our temple clean. We've got to stay clean. We've got to stay uh, away from people who are foul, who are unclean. Now we can go and witness to them, but we can't mix with them, mm -hmm. uh, mix the clean and the unclean. Mm -hmm. He's saying you've got to separate it. See when uh, then the it will end up being unclean. It's all unclean. If you mix, if you pour clean into a dirty glass, it all becomes unclean. And so the word of God, that's going to be clean. It's going to be pure. Now, one of the things Sherry and I had to, had to do when uh, we needed healing for our daughter, uh, and all of our friends were unbelievers, and they. They didn't believe in healing and they didn't believe in miracles. The Lord told us to separate ourselves from them. We had to go around people who believed in healing, believed in miracles. Mm -hmm. And it was only then that our daughter got healed. If we had stayed around the unbelievers and fellowship with unbelievers, then she would have died. Okay. But mm -hmm. we did what the Holy Spirit said. We separated ourselves. We just uh, stopped those relationships, even though they were lovely people. We loved them. We had had mm -hmm. lots of fun with them. We had spent time with them. Uh, that we all went to the same church, but they didn't believe in healing. And we needed healing. And so we had to separate from the unbelievers and get around people who believed God and believed the, God's word. The truth. The truth. The truth. Okay. Then I have another one in Numbers. Let's just look at Numbers this. 5, 2, and 3. Command the children of Israel, that's you and I, that they put out of the camp every leper, everyone who has a discharge, 
and whoever becomes defiled by a uh, by a dead corpse you shall put out both male and female you shall put them outside the camp that they may not defile their their camps in the midst of which i dwell now that's an old testament uh it's an old testament principle but the idea is spiritual and it can come into uh, into the present day use and that is let's separate from people who are unclean who are defiled who are uh who are uh speaking doubt and unbelief let's separate uh from them and, and it's not just because what they do to themselves it they defile the whole camp they defile the atmosphere and, and so you can't mm -hmm. think oh i i can be around these people and, and they're unbelievers mm -hmm. and they're doing all kinds of ungodly things and it won't affect me yes yeah, it affects you. you it affects your faith it affects the atmosphere it said it's going to they're going to defile the whole camp you put one uh unclean person you put them in a camp with a lot of other people or you put them in a church building with a lot of other people and and you just accept that and uh, and this sin and you accept uh, sin and uh turn your eye uh, uh, and away from the the sin and it affects the whole church group mm -hmm. it affects all of you it can affect your family uh, and it's not just about one person but this talks about one person who is defiled can defile the whole camp even Amen. though other people are doing what is right it can affect you what other people it's important who you associate with with whom you associate and, and don't associate mm -hmm. and, and think these are your friends and they're, they're going to come in and they're going to be a uh, sinners or uh, doing sin or involved in sin and then not affect you it will affect you it will hinder your abundant life for you to live an abundant life you have to live and do what the bible tells you to do amen, amen. okay and then there's another one there's another one and that's talked about corruption so this is the three points if you try to mix the truth with true facts you get confusion oh hallelujah that's right. you get contamination and you get corruption okay so read this mm. verse about corruption now second corinthians eleven three, but i fear lest somehow as the serpent deceived eve by his craftiness so your minds listen to this may be corrupted from the simplicity that is in christ oh the corruption yes the mind the, the mind, mind is corrupted. Oh. what uh, about your what are you thinking on what's your thoughts so it's really important we have to recognize there is a big difference between god's point of view the truth that he speaks through his word versus what our situation is in the natural realm what we're going through in the natural and, and if we just mix these we're not going to get heaven working on our behalf but if we recognize there is a truth that is higher than my situation mm -hmm. and i want to apply the truth from heaven the perspective of heaven in what god has said the truth then i can change whatever temporary situation because although natural realm is the temporary situation the truth is the eternal and the eternal can change the temporary but you have to believe and you have I to mean, recognize mm -hmm. there is a difference between the truth and just what you observe what you see and hear in the natural i want to give several examples okay, okay. i want to give you some examples that you can catch hold on and one is uh, i found this scripture as i was studying for another message uh, it's in uh, psalms verse 20 uh, chapter 25 verse 22 and as we've been praying for israel we've been praying for israel every day uh, praying for the peace of jerusalem I found this scripture as I was studying for another message. And it says, this is what uh, King David is saying. He said, deliver Israel 
out of her troubles. Deliver Israel out of her troubles. Well, that is the truth. God's word is the truth. And so when I speak it out of my mouth over Israel, it takes dominion and, and dominates what's going on in Israel concerning the war, concerning their enemies, concerning the missiles that are going off, the, the guns that are going off. Deliver Israel from all her troubles. Hallelujah. And and that was very powerful to me. It went off in my spirit like a like a tornado or a bomb. And and so this is what I've been speaking over Israel every day because it is the truth and it takes dominion over the true facts of the war that's going on right now. That's one example. The second example is I've had several incidents lately where uh, the writing on a page uh, has become um, blurry to me. However, I found a verse that takes precedence over the true facts. And that verse says that it's about Moses, and but now it's about me. My eyes, my, my vision, my, my, my eyes, eyes will not grow dim. My eyes will not grow dim. And my strength, listen to this, will not diminish. In December, I'll be 77. It says that my eyes shall not grow dim and my strength shall not be diminished. That verse takes precedence, dominion, authority over any true facts that might be going on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> So if you want to change your situation, you need to recognize whatever you're going through is temporary. And God's perspective and God's truth is eternal and it will dominate the inferior temporary situation if you believe. And so you need to be studying the word of God and speaking the word of God, speak it out over yourself over and over. That, that's what Sherry's been doing the last few days. Her eyes shall not grow dim. Her strength, strength will shall not diminish. diminish. She's been speaking that out over and over. The, so she's been speaking the truth over the things that she has experienced in her body because what she has been experiencing in mm -hmm. her body is temporary and it can be changed yeah. when we recognize there's a difference between the truth of God's word and true situations and Amen. circumstances. Amen. Now, I, I, I want to talk about some applications now. And one application is about, let's say your relationships. And let's say your relationship with your children. And what I want you to recognize that God has a perspective about your spouse, about your children. It's heaven's perspective, how they are known in heaven. Now, what we tend to think about our spouse and our children is what we see. We see maybe some bad behavior. We may see some sickness, some infirmity. We may see some different things down here, but we, we, need to take the truth and change the temporary natural situation. Mm -hmm. And one way that you do it, if, if for example, if you have uh, a child who uh, has bad behavior, behavior that you're not, uh, that you're not satisfied with, that's contrary uh, to whom God has created them to be uh, and ordained them to be and call them to be. Well, let's think about how do we identify what true identity is. And a good example here is Matthew 16. And we're going to, uh, I'm going to read, and this was, Jesus was walking with his disciples and he asked them, who do men say that I am? See, that's, that's true facts. Uh, true facts. Okay. Matthew 16, okay, so uh, 13 through 17. 
Now, when Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he was asking his disciples, who do men say that the son of man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist and others, Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah, or one of the other prophets. He said to them. Uh oh, now let, let's just go back and review. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just what men were talking about, what men said. Maybe it's about uh, what doctors have said about your child. Yeah. Uh, what, uh, or about you. Or, or your principal, what, or the, let's say your school teacher for your child, the, the school teacher. What has your school teacher said? And, and I think about a uh, uh, young woman that I know. And uh, when she was in school, I can think about a couple of examples here. When she was in school, uh, her teacher said she couldn't learn. Right. Okay. So they just kept uh, moving her through the system and that never taught her anything uh, because they said she couldn't learn. Well, when she got uh, older and mature, an adult, uh, she received the Holy Spirit, uh, received Jesus as her Savior. And uh, received the Holy Spirit and then went to college and became an honor student. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> so, so what the teachers were saying was a, a lie. It was a, a, a lie. It's what they were seeing with their eyes in the natural, but mm -hmm. it was not the truth. The truth was she was an excellent student. God poured things into her. She understood things uh, that the teachers didn't teach her. And she received, she was an honor student Amen. in college. Amen. And this teacher said, well, she can't learn anything. Here's another example like that. Uh, my daughter-in-law, uh, she, when she was about 14 or 15, she had one teacher that every day said, you're stupid and you cannot learn. Well, what it did to my daughter-in-law, of course, she wasn't married to my son at that point in time. She was just a teenager, 14, 15 years old. But she kept hearing this, and this this is what the teacher was saying. It was not what God was saying about her. And, and so what she did at about age 15, she ran away from home. Mm, she dropped went out, out of school. Dropped out of school, went out on and lived on the streets for a number of years. And, and became she, a drug addict. And, and uh, uh, eventually met my son, and then they both did drugs. Uh, but the idea was, no, she couldn't learn. She, one, t one teacher. Just what she said, one teacher caused her to drop out of school and live on the streets, run away from home and become a drug addict. Now, God has delivered her and delivered my son oh, yeah. oh, from yeah. uh, drugs. And now she is a college student and she is an honor student in hey, college. Amen. Oh, amen. Well, amen. what the teacher said was, a temporary uh, assessment of the situation, which was absolutely wrong because this young woman is intelligent, very intelligent. She has gone to college and, and she is an honor student and not only an honor student, but she has received an award for her, uh, the achievement that uh, she has uh, made in college. So a complete turnaround. And those are, those, uh, that was through really the help of the Holy Spirit changing things around. So what people were seeing at one point in time uh, can be changed. And what you're seeing in your children's situation mm -hmm. can be changed when you take a higher perspective, when you take heaven's perspective. Now we see here that people were saying things about Jesus. They were saying different yeah, kind of right. things about Jesus. But none of those were the truth. And then Jesus said, said, Whom who, do, who you? do you say that I am? And Simon Peter spoke up and he answered, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Borjona, because flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father, which is in heaven. Woo, okay. Hallelujah. Well, Love the point that. point I want you to Love get that. from this is that that's Jesus's true identity. It's what the Father said about Jesus. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. 
And Jesus, oh, ooh, Jesus said, the Father has revealed that to you. And that was his identity. That is his identity. It's what heaven said about him. It's the truth about what heaven is saying, said about Jesus at that point in time. And your identity is not based on temporary situations and circumstances. It's what heaven says about you and your children. Their true identity is not their behavior. And it's not based on their behavior. It's based on what heaven is saying about your children. Your spouse's true identity is not based on his or her behavior. Your uh, spouse's identity is based on what the heaven is saying about that person. Okay, hallelujah. You you hallelujah. No, you go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, so. I'll, I'll, I'll minister in a minute. So we have to know what heaven says about our spouse, about our children. And, and see, our children may behave poorly, or, or we may have a spouse that does something we don't like, but we let's don't run them down. Let's don't get on those points on natural things. Let's don't let's don't uh, have strife and contention at the natural realm. Let's begin to bring down heaven's perspective on things. What Peter saw and mm -hmm. heard from heaven was that Jesus was the Christ, the son of the living God. Now, if you have, let's say, a child who ha is sick down here, you've got some natural circumstances, or, or you've got some bad behavior, uh, let's say, you, you don't want to just harp on the bad behavior. That's all temporary, and it can be changed if you recognize what the true identity is. That's the truth. And the, and the things we're observing in the natural realm, that's only temporary. And we can change what we see in the natural realm mm -hmm. and what is temporary if we recognize what heaven is saying, the what truth. heaven's perspective is, what the truth of the situation is. If we act on that and we believe that, then we can make a change and change situations. Now, let me give you an example. There's a man that we know that uh, a few days ago, uh, he did something bad. And I don't know what he did, but he got fired from his work. Okay. So, uh, and he lost his job and he lost his income and, and he's in a predicament. Okay. That is temporary situation. And, and so I talked to him on the phone and I reminded him the truth, who he, who his true identity is, because I wanted to pull him up. I didn't want to push him down. I didn't want to keep him in his situation. I, I wanted to pull him up and I wanted to remind him of what his identity really is. Now, if you look at Sherry and me, we never put each other down. Uh, even at the house, or when we're alone, I don't put her down. She doesn't put me down. Uh, we may do things that uh, uh, the other one might not like, but we don't press them down, push them down, stomp on them. Yeah. We, we, we lift each other up. And, and so we need to do that with each of us, needs to do that with our spouse and with our children. And if our children are doing bad behavior, or uh, we need to remind them of what heaven says about them. And we need to know. It's not good enough to just imagine what heaven is saying about it. We need to spend time in prayer and ask, word. and ask God, what is the truth about my child? And if they're going through some sickness, uh, then ask, what is the truth? What is heaven's perspective here? Because I know whatever their situation is, whatever the situation is, it's temporary and it can be changed if I know what heaven's perspective and the, what heaven is saying about that situation. Okay, thank you for being Amen. here. And I'm Amen. going to turn it over to Sherry. Hallelujah, is, hallelujah. Thank you. thank you, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for this message, Amen. Uh, I believe that that the Lord is speaking uh, to all of us, and He He's wanting us to come to a higher level of thinking, a higher level of living, uh, and and to receive 
all that he has for us. That's how this whole session started uh, tonight, that he said that it was a time of harvest, a time of abundance. And, you know, remember those three points that if we try to mix the truth and, and, and true facts, uh, well, this is what the doctor said. This is what the test showed uh, that I have uh, an ulcer or I have uh, appendicitis or I have cancer. Uh, you know, that is a true fact. And if we mix uh, the truth, which says, by the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. And the true fact about cancer, number one, I would be dead today. Because that's what the doctor said 29 years ago. You have terminal thyroid cancer and it spreads very quickly and you will die in six months. Now, that's what they told me. That's what they told me. And so when we mix those things, and I'm just, I'm just summarizing, if you will, those three points. If you try to mix those things, then there's going to be confusion. There's going to be contamination and there's going to be corruption. And all three of those bring unproductive situations in your life, whether it be a healing, whether it be finances, whether it be a relationship, whether it be your, your ministry, whatever it might be, you need to speak the truth. Speak the truth only. Hallelujah. Because it is the higher level. Praise God. I, I love this. I love this. And I want to do this. I want to be a, a doer of this word tonight. And I ask that the Lord seal this message to your hearts and that you will begin to meditate and think on it and that it will make a difference in your life and the way you think and the way you move and the, and the faith that you have, that it will produce much fruit 